Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, thanks for showing up. I'm Jim. And this tutorial video is about Luminar Neo. And specifically, I'm looking at contrast in an image and how you can adjust that. And even more specifically, I'm comparing uh, Super Contrast, which is an amazing tool. And I think, uh, honestly, one of the best tools in Luminar with Smart Contrast, which is built into the develop tool. And I want to kind of walk through some of the differences, kind of how you can use uh, either one of them on an image and why I think Super Contrast is one of the best tools and uh, I highly recommend getting familiar with it. So here's an image. I've done nothing to it other than remove spots. If you look on the Edits tab, I did use Erase, but in Raw Develop, I didn't do anything. No contrast adjustments, highlights or shadows, no whites and blacks, no curves. You probably know if you're to use Neo that if you skip over Raw Develop and then jump into another tool first, it will kick Raw Develop over to the Edit tab. So I just wanted to point that out that I've done nothing to the photo. The before and after is just spot removal. And that's because I want to compare the two different types of contrast. The first one, and one that I use a lot and I like quite a bit, is called Smart Contrast. And it's right here in the Light section in the Develop module. And this gives you great contrast uh, in an image. And as you drag it to the right, you can see kind of what's happening. It's creating contrast, right? So the dark stuff is getting darker. The light stuff is getting lighter. Contrast being the difference between bright and dark, essentially. And I think having proper contrast in an image really can make an image. Uh, very often, flat image to me just looks kind of unfinished. I think it needs some contrast, doesn't have to be high contrast. Um, and by the way, I'm working with a color image here. I would actually do things probably a little bit differently in a monochrome. If you want to see more videos about monochromes, let me know uh, in a comment down below. Anyway, here's Smart Contrast. Now, I'm not going to do anything with the highlights or the whites here. And I want to point out in the current version of Luminar, there's not a histogram and therefore you can't really see if you're blowing out highlights, but it kind of looks like I am right up in here. So you want to be careful. And of course, the further I drag smart contrast, you know, the more kind of uh, dramatic the image gets, but of course, the more kind of blown out looking those, uh, those highlight areas get. My hope is once we have the histogram, we'll also have the ability to hit the J key and see what's blown out, that sort of thing. I'll cover that when we have that, but we don't now. So right now, Smart Contrast does something like that, which honestly, it looks great. You just have to be careful not to go too far because you get into that kind of situation. And that's why I wanted to compare this to Super Contrast. Let me just go over here and I will just, in the Edit tab, delete that Develop so that you know that uh, nothing is being applied to the photo. And I'm going to pop into Super Contrast, which um, if you're not familiar with it, with it, it's got three different areas. It separates three tonal areas, highlights, midtones, and shadows, allowing you to adjust contrast in each one. And even more importantly and more powerfully, there's a balance slider, which effectively helps you define more specifically which area is considered a highlight, a midtone, or a shadow. So amazing, frankly, ultimate control over contrast in your image. So what I will often do is go, you know, about midway on each of these three just to kind of see how it looks on the photo. And then I come back and adjust the balance accordingly to see what I like. So you can see with balance on highlights, when I go left, I'm really getting blown out in those areas. That's not good. And if I go to the right, it's really getting kind of gray and muted, kind of flat. In other words, it's lacking contrast. I don't like that either. So I'm actually going to reset that to zero and leave the highlights alone in this image for now. I'm going to go ahead and go to mid-tone. So once again, if I go left, you can kind of see what it's doing. It's actually, because there's a lot of mid-tones in an image, it's actually creating, uh, looks as though the waterfalls are actually a little bit more full and uh, you know wide than they were uh, without adding that slider. So there it is before, and there it is now. It kind of creates a little bit uh, more volume in the water almost. And so something to think about, if I go to the right, you can see all these areas that are getting kind of light gray, they're lacking contrast, and so that's where the midtones are, are applying. So I'm actually going to go a little bit left, um, and then you can adjust to season to taste by dragging this slider like uh, left or right as well. So if I go really far right, it gets a whole lot of that. I want to be careful because, again, I don't want to blow it out. I just want to make sure I'm controlling contrast in my image. And so I'm just going to, you know, again, it's season to taste. Every image is different, so this isn't like specifically use it this way on every image. It's an experimentation thing, but I recommend coming in with a balance and just experimenting to see kind of what happens. I kind of like it about like that, I think. 
and then I'm going to go to Shadows Contrast. So this is the one for me where I can really get those deeper, richer, dark shadow areas, which create that lovely, beautiful kind of um, almost dramatic contrast in an image. So I've got Shadows Contrast about halfway. If I go left, it's getting flatter, so I don't really like that, although it gives you great visibility into the image. I personally like having contrast in an image, so I'm actually gonna go the other way. Now, if I go too far, I don't wanna overdo that and make it look overly dramatic, but I definitely wanna go a little bit to the right. Now, that's the shadows balance. Don't forget, you can also just come back and adjust the amount here of shadows contrast. So, again, it's all experimentation. It's about just kind of moving the sliders around and experimenting and seeing what you like and ending up with something that, you know, is, uh, is suitable to your taste, I guess. So. Let me show you what I've got with Super Contrast so far. There it is before, and there it is after. A little bit more contrast, a little bit more controlled uh, contrast relative to what uh, Smart Contrast in the Develop tool was doing for me, because that one is a, um, I don't wanna call it a blunt instrument. It's not just like dragging the saturation slider and everything goes over the top, but it's kinda like that. It's, it's not specific, it's not separated by zone, and while it is Smart Contrast, it's not necessarily uh, it's not nearly as smart as Super Contrast because it doesn't give you the same amount of control. This one, frankly, just gives you amazing control, and that's why I like it so much because I can come in and really fine-tune and dial in contrast in the areas that I, that I want it in specific amounts that I want as well. So again, every photo is different. Experiment and have fun, but you can see that I went from there to there, and that's a pretty gentle overall contrast look, but if I wanted to, because of all these controls, I could come and dial that in, amp it up, that sort of thing, if I wanted to. So often what I'll do is I'll start with a raw develop, do some basic adjustments there, and then come to super contrast, really dial it in, because remember, every time you uh, drag and, or increase contrast, it is gonna adjust or impact how the colors look. So I tend to do light, before I do color because I want to get the light looking the way I want it to look and then come back and play with colors because if I do color first and then go do contrast, my colors are going to look off because the contrast is going to impact them. So one more time, here's the before and after for super contrast. Really dialed in. I think I kept it pretty solid and, and for lack of a better word, safe, kind of gentle in the highlights area. Um, well, because I, I was at zero. Actually, I think my final edit, I was a little bit more like that, and maybe a slight uh, decrease in balance, something like that. Here's the thing, I want the whites, uh, the bright highlight parts to really pop, I just don't wanna blow them out. So just be careful with that highlights contrast, but again, it gives you a lot of control, more control than I would have with Smart Contrast. I think the mid-tones look great as well. I can always come back and experiment more if I want to. You can kinda see how that's impacting that image. Um, Something like that, I think, looks good. That's a, probably about where I had it. And then I, you know, I always kind of double check myself, check my balance. I kind of like the balance like that, negative 100 with only a little bit of increase in contrast. And then the shadows, I'm gonna come in. I'm actually gonna go a little bit more intense there, but just keep in mind, you, as it, when you increase that shadows balance, it's gonna impact how the highlights look. So it's a delicate dance, like everything. Season to taste, play around, move these sliders. My point was you get massive amounts of control to perfectly fine tune and dial in contrast in an image with super contrast. That's how it looked before. That's how it looks now. I think that was great. Honestly, I don't know that I would really do anything else to this photo. I think that's basically a complete edit. And all I did was remove spots and add super contrast. So powerful, powerful tool in super contrast. Really amazing. I highly recommend diving in with it. Try it on some images. See what it can do for you. That's why I wanted to walk through this because it gives you so much power and control. And I think that's a key tool to understand to really get the light balanced and looking great in your photos using Luminar Neo. Thank you for watching. I hope it helps my friends. You guys take care of yourselves. I will be back soon with another video. Until then, again, take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon and adios.